everyone who battles cancer is brave. But I wanted to make sure that when we're here tonight, that I did my part to make sure that I will never forget the two people who I loved uh, almost more than anybody who battled cancer in a very difficult way. So when we're here tonight, and I hear people saying things that are way beyond the pale about people on this side of the aisle, I know we're doing the right thing because I sit here and I think of my grandparents and what they would want me to do. Now, the other part that's ironic is my grandparents were successful small business owners, okay? They figured out a way to support their kids, give them a great opportunity, and ultimately give a lot back to their community. Just like people all across the state struggling with trying to figure out the balance between paying for health insurance, making sure you have access to the things that you need with your health care, and also as a small business owner, trying to make sure you can make a profit or find a way to balance all that together. Now, there are many people on our side of the aisle, and I respect them a lot because I consider myself uh, in this group. They're philosophically opposed to mandates on insurance policies. doesn't matter what the mandate is. They try to feel, they believe, and I joined this group as I said, that having an insurance plan with lots of choices means lower prices and ultimately more coverage for people all across the state. But there are some times where you try to find that balance between saying, how do we achieve the adequate coverage that's necessary, but do it in a way that's cost effective. Now, what happened on the other side of the Capitol with the state Senate? They didn't have a great deal of debate in committee. And that's why when we sat down and looked at the bill and said, if we're going to put this into place, how do we ensure that it's done in a way that keeps to the goals and the principles of giving access, but also does it in a way that mirrors the rest of the country and also does it in a way that ensures that we have the lowest possible cost on health insurance because the last thing we want is for anybody to not be able to afford insurance because if you can't afford the health insurance, you're certainly not going to have access to the drugs that you need to save your life. Now, I understand, as I've said before, that some people decided to use this for an opportunity to score political points. I think that's sad. I think that where we are is at a place where we're going to pass a bill that will impact a whole lot of people. We're going to pass a bill that has some reasonable changes in it that mirror the rest of the country. Lady from the 10th. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Wow, that was interesting. Almost believable if it wouldn't have happened at the 11th hour and only after a whole bunch of press and headlines and editorials from around the state. always bothers me when people think they've done enough for cancer when they light the dome pink or purple or teal or whatever cancer color month it is and see look how much we cared we colored the dome or I've gone to a walk or I've lit a candle or I've posed for pictures with young people with disabilities see how much I care that's not showing how much you care. That's showing how much you care about scoring political points. That's showing how much you want some nice pictures for your re-election cards. I cannot believe what this body is doing today. We had the possibility to get something done for the people in the state of Wisconsin. Today, a clean bill. I talked to cancer groups. They said this is an unhappy compromise, an unhappy compromise. They felt they had nothing that they could do. They have nothing to bargain with other than their lives. This is, this is such hypocrisy, I can't stand it. If there was true intent on getting a good bill passed, we would have had a, an executive hearing in the health committee where we could have debated alternatives and looked at how to make a bill better. But this bill never had an executive hearing in the Health Committee. We had an incredibly moving public hearing 
where people talked about the impact of not being able to afford treatment and what that did and how that devastated their families. I remember one young woman talked about how her family had to give up paying for her brother's education. He could not go to college because they had to use up all their savings to pay for her treatment. And she's still years in debt paying it off. That did not move the committee to have an executive hearing on it because the intent was let's just shuffle this bill around. Again, let's not have revisionist history. The real history is the intent from the leaders of both houses majority houses, were to shuffle this bill around and try to kill it. And look how good we are. We passed a bill in one house. It's different than the bill in the other house. And maybe, just maybe, the Senate will take it up and change it in the exact same form and we can do something besides light candles. Don't hold your breath on it. Don't hold your breath on it. The only sure way to get this thing done is by passing a clean bill. I keep waiting for the, the profiles and courage moments in this house. I keep waiting for it, for someone to break away from the man behind the curtain who tells everyone how to vote, for someone to say, you know what, enough of that. I'm going to do what's right for my constituents. I'm going to do what's right for the people in Wisconsin. I'm going to save some lives tonight. Gentleman from the 38th. Lady from the 10th. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the lady from the 10th talked about us not understanding because we walk in walks. We wear ribbons. We light the dome. How dare some of the members who have spoken on the other side tonight belittle the efforts of what we have done. This bill, no question, is a mandate. And for those of us conservative on this side who agree with it today, agree because we are pro-life and know that this is actually a pro-life bill. So the sanctimonious attitude that comes to us with disingenuous intent is not welcome, Mr. Speaker. Gentleman from the 78th. You say you care, but then you take actions like voting for this poison pill, kill the cancer medicine bill amendment that will end the discussion. It will mean this bill does not pass. Just like we hear you say, recognizing the school children who are visiting here, the fourth and fifth graders like the gentleman from the fifth did, and then you vote record cuts to public education, $792 million. That was not necessary because we didn't have a, a budget crisis. And then you say you care about technical colleges. Well, you vote $72 million cuts to the technical college budget, a third of their budget. So it's not that we're saying you don't care. It's that we're saying you don't care enough to do anything about it for everybody. And that's the problem. That's the disconnect. And that's been the history of Governor Walker in this last three years. Is you're great at saying, you're great at talking the talk, but you're terrible at walking the walk and investing in things that will make a real difference. 